Hello and welcome to a short video which will cover how to write a C program in Keel Microvision 5 which will blink the LEDs on the STM32F4 discovery board on and off. There is a written version of this tutorial available along with the final source code to download, the link is in the description. Firstly, before we start anything, we need to know a few things about the LEDs on the discovery board and how they are connected to the microcontroller. The four LEDs are connected to pins on the microcontroller and in order to switch them on, the microcontroller must provide a voltage outputs from each respective microcontroller pin. If we look at the STM32F4 Discovery User Manual on page 18, we can see that the LEDs are connected to the following pins on the GPIO D pause. Green is connected to pin 12, orange to pin 13, red to pin 14, and finally blue to pin 15. Let's map these on the actual discovery board for reference. OK, let's get into the programming. Assuming you've set up your Keel project, if you haven't, you can follow the video in the card above. We will create a new C file and call it main. To do this, right click the source group 1 folder, select add new item, Select a C file and name it main, press add. The first line of code that we must include is to tell the compiler where to find some of the functions that will be used throughout this tutorial. We use the hashtag include directive with the header file we want to include in quotation marks. In this case we want to include the stm32f4xx.h file. Then we need to write our main functions. This is written using the int main open and close brackets followed by open and closed braces. The main program code goes in between the braces of the main function. We can add comments to our code by using a double forward slash. It is always important to comment your code to tell a reader what your code does. This is especially important if you are watching this for some kind of school assignment as marks will most likely be allocated to code documentation. We will add a comment to describe our next lines of code, which will be initializing the general purpose out input or output ports, or GPIO ports. In order for the pins to function correctly, the clock of the GPIO D must be enabled. This is done using the following code. RCC, our arrow operator, ahb1 enr bitwise or function and then rcc underscore ahb1 enr underscore gpiodn. This line of code is essentially a predefined function that is included in the header file that we previously mentioned. These functions allow a more straightforward method to set certain bits in the control registers of the microcontroller. Next, we need to tell the microcontroller that pins 12 to 15 are outputs. This is done by using some other helpful predefined functions, such as GPIOD, arrow operator, MODA, bitwise or, sorry, bitwise or, and then GPIO underscore MODA underscore MODA pin number underscore zero. We repeat this for each pin. Now, the LEDs are now configured to, for use. We need to create an infinite loop in order to make the LEDs blink indefinitely. If we don't make a loop like this, the program will just run through once before terminating. We will use a while loop with a 1 in its condition brackets so it loops indefinitely. In order to turn on an LED, its respective pin in the GPIOD bit set reset register must be set to 1. The bit set reset register, or BSRR, is a 32 bit output register where writing a 1 to a pin in the lower 16 bits sets that output high, and writing a 1 to the same pin in the upper register will reset the output to low, hence bit set and reset register. 
it is a little more understandable when it is written in code. So to turn on an LED, let's say the green LED on pin 12, we write GPIOD, our operator, bit set reset register, equals 1, shifted to bit 12. To turn off the green LED, we simply do the same again, but shift a 1 to the 12th pin in the upper register, which is done by adding 16. You may, add, uh, you may get a little yellow warning indication, but this is not a problem. Keel is just informing you that the plus will be evaluated before shifting, which is what we want. You can, re you can remove this warning if you want uh, by putting brackets around the 12 plus 16. We can repeat this for the other LEDs by changing the respective pin number that we set ones to. Now, the problem with this code is that the LEDs will switch on and off much too fast for the LEDs, the physical LEDs, to respond. They will just appear off. To fix this, we need to incorporate a delay after turning the LEDs on and again after turning them off. This can be achieved in many different ways, but for simplicity, here we will just use a basic for loop. At the beginning of our code, outside of our infinite loop, we need to define a variable that we'll use in our loop. We'll do this by defining a 32-bit unsigned integer with the variable name i. Back in our infinite loop, and after we have turned on each LED, we'll make our for loop, which will iterate many times. In my case, with the clock speed I've set my discovery board to, I will set this to 2 million iterations. You can tweak this later if you um, notice that the delay is too fast or too slow. Uh, I will have another tutorial about configuring the actual clock speeds of the STM32F4 Discovery at a later date. Look out for that if you're interested. Now you can simply copy and paste the, de the delay code after switching the LEDs off to complete the code. Now build the program. Uh, using the F7 keyboard shortcut or the build button, you should see it build without errors. Now let's upload it to the discovery board. Press the download button or the F8 keyboard shortcut and you should be able to see the code has now been uploaded to the discovery board which is indicated by the programming done output in the build output window. The LEDs on your STM32F4 discovery board should now be blinking on and off. Thank you for watching. If this video has helped you, please consider liking the video and consider subscribing.